Hi guys. This video is part of a series on DDD, my DIY dev droid. I was going to jump straight into speed control of DDD. In planning though, I realized that this video would become several hours long. So this is one of three videos working towards how we control the speed of DDD's wheels. In this video, we're going to start by getting the motors turning, creating a throttle that my Pico can control to drive the speed of DDD's wheels. This can look in a future video on how we measure the speed of the wheels and finally how to control the wheels to achieve a specific speed, the beginning of control for a wheeled robot. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I really appreciate it and I appreciate you being with me here today. Just a quick recap on DDD. DDD is a three wheeled robot for the purposes of experimentation with robotics and ROS2 using the Raspberry Pi Pico and Raspberry Pi 4. DDD is driven by two 12 volt motors on the front two wheels, and it uses a dual H bridge driver, but a module to do that. So our throttle for our DDD and for its uh, motors is gonna be just like the throttle on the car. When we uh, set the throttle, we expect DDD to accelerate to some given speed. Of course, the speed that it accelerates to, in fact, the speed that each of the two motors accelerate to, and therefore wheels, is actually not necessarily consistent. Just setting the speed or setting the throttle to a particular level does not mean that actually the motors will be going at the same speed. Speed and throttle are not the same thing, and it's not consistent from motor to motor, even when they're identical serial parts. So to manage the throttle and to operate this, we're going to use the magic of PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. So Pulse Width Modulation is really all about the cycle, the cycle of a waveform, uh, a square wave that we're being generating out of a GPIO pin. Um, and that has a cycle. And a portion of that, the signal is high for. We call that duty cycle, the portion of the cycle for which it is high. Now I've done some short videos already on uh, pulse width modulation. You'll see ones that are that are link in the description around LEDs and, and fading them, around motors already, around controlling those motors and speed, and around controlling servos. So there's plenty of stuff already out there on, on PWM. And in fact, one of my courses, which are also linked in the description, also goes into PWM in some detail around how to do that on the Pico. So the way that PWM will work is we will drive PWM into one side of the motor while holding the other side to ground. Then the uh, higher the duty cycle, i.e. the more time that uh, the, the signal is high for, the faster the motor will actually rotate. Of course, this is throttle, not speed. So exactly what speed is going at, we don't know yet, but we know that actually if we have a, a, more, a higher duty cycle, so basically that graph looks more red, then the motor will be going faster. If we've got it um, so those duty cycles are very small, then actually uh, the motor will uh, slow down and go at a, a lower speed until it actually stalls. If we want to reverse the speed of the motor and go from clockwise to counterclockwise, well, then we actually need to apply the PWM signal to the other input on the motor and put the um, the previous one to ground. It's a DC motor, that's how it works. Of course, the Pico can't possibly provide enough volts or enough current to drive those motors directly. We need something in the way. And we've already briefly talked about our dual H bridge being that component. That allows us to go from the relatively low current 3.3 volts, you know, a few, few microamps, that our Pico can actually source up to um, 12 volts and a reasonable pokey amount of current to drive those motors at speed. So we've got a L298N dual H bridge that I'm using for that. There are other um, H bridges out there. There are other approaches to doing this. Um, this is what I happen to have on hand. So I'm reusing it for this motor and for the experimentation. This uh, dual H bridge actually allows us to control four outputs, which is exactly what we need to do to control the two motors. 
and it will allow us to take a PWM signal at 3.3 volts and give us that same PWM signal, but now at 12 volts with some good bit of current behind it. We can see it's reasonable current because there's a massive great heat sink sitting on top of um, uh, that transistor there. So our dual age bridge is going to have a 12 volt supply. There's also a optional 5 volt there, but it is optional. If you don't need it, I'm not using it. Then our motors get connected in the side here and we, we connect each of the, the motors and their two sides clockwork and clockwise and clockwise into those ports. There are two enable jumpers for the motor A and motor B that needs to be closed and it needs to have a jumper on there. I spent quite a bit of time uh, scratching my head while doing this stuff because I didn't have a jumper on one side of it and I couldn't for the life of me work out why my motor wasn't doing anything. So be careful, there are enablers on both sides. This is quite useful in robotics because quite often you do want a stop button that can just shut down your motors, your robot where it is, without actually necessarily turning off all the rest of the electronics and uh, system that you want to know what's going on. But when it starts going crazy and it's not going where you want it to, uh, an emergency stop button is useful and those enables are one approach to doing that. Then the control circuits coming in from the Pico, the PWMs, 3.3 uh, volts, are coming in to um, those four channels up the top there. And we have a channel for motor A and B, both the clockwise and counterclockwise side. They basically are just generating and driving down to those ports going out to those motors. So that is exactly how I'm connecting everything up uh, to my uh, Pico and to my motors in order to generate this drive experiment. I've placed all the source code for today into a repo on GitHub, DDDXB, DDD Experiments. Um, this is gonna have lots of projects in it. This first one is number one, motor control. The source code and everything we're going to go through today is actually really simple. This is all going to be around the Pico SDK itself and some C++ code to drive PWM. So I've got the copy of the repo here and we're in the motor control um, project, uh, number one here. Um, oops, sorry, closing it down there. And there is a little bit more source code in here than I technically need. Um, I've actually got in here the code to be able to do all of the sensing speed work as well, which is why there's some GPIO input manager stuff. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to talk about that this time. I'll talk about that next time. Today, let's just focus on the throttle and getting that, how we're operating that. So in motor manager is really where all of the magic happens. We've got a constructor here and we're giving that constructor details of the um, GPIO pin that we're using with our um, H-bridge to drive the clockwise, the clockwise and counterclockwise pins on, on the, the motor itself. Um, I'm also giving it the sensor pins to use for speed sensing, but again, don't worry about those just yet. The other uh, function we're going to worry about in here is set throttle, where we're going to basically set the percentage of the throttle um, which I'm representing between zero and one as floats, and the direction that we want the motor to rotate. So do we want it to go clockwise or do we want it to go counterclockwise? And that's all there. So that those are the two methods we're going to look at. Uh, nice and easy, nice and straightforward. So over in the C++ code. So this um, constructor is uh, storing our GPIO pins for future reference because we're going to need them every time we want to change the throttle speed. And then it's setting up the function of those uh, GPIO pads to be PWM. Um, it's setting their levels to currently be zero. Uh, it's finding out where, which slicer they're using and enabling it so that the PWM process is all up and running and we can then uh, set PWM level on them. And we're doing that twice. We're doing that once for the clockwise 
um, GPIO pad and one's for the counterclockwise GPIO pad. Again, there, there are some bits ar around here around observing GPIO. This is for the speed sensing bit. Don't worry about that too much just yet. So let's have a look at th set throttle. Well, this is taking in that um, percentage uh, of uh, the throttle to be using um, between zero and one and the direction. So we're, I'm doing a little bit of validation here um, just to make sure that the throttle isn't negative. Is it zero, is it? Uh, if it's zero, then we're actually going to stop our rotation on, on by setting both GPIO levels to zero. Um, if it's greater than one, we are set it to one, so we're limiting it to the maximum that we can get up to. And then we're going to convert it to a PWM number. So PWM on the Pico is a 16-bit um, floating point uh, or 16-bit integer value. So I need to do a little bit of mass here to convert our um, float number between 0 and 1 to be a integer between 0 and hex FFFF. And that's done by that line. Once we've got that, then we can uh, set the GPIO levels. Obviously, if we're going clockwise, what we do is we set the counterclockwise uh, GPIO pad to zero, so it will be basically negative. And then we set the, or ground, let's, let's be more precise, then the um, clockwork or a clockwise uh, GPIO pad, we're going to set that to our new PWM number that we've just calculated. If we're going counterclockwise, then we need to do it the other way around. And that's what's giving us the direction. Um, you can see here I've got some printfs where I was um, trying to debug what was going wrong with my setup. Uh, you, I talked earlier about the enable uh, pin on both sides of the on the A channel and B channel of the H bridge. Uh, well, I forgot that you had to enable the other channel, and I spent uh, an hour or so debugging why my code wasn't driving it and why we weren't getting any signal out. Oh, it's fine. I hadn't put an enable jumper on. Oh, well, there you go. Um, main. So what's main doing? Well, um, in main, we're just going to do a test. So I've got definitions here for the GPIO pads I happen to be using in my experiments for the clockwork, clockwise and counterclockwise pins on both of the motors. So our main program itself is going to create a left motor and a right motor uh, and provide those uh, defaults into those. It's then going to run um, a, a loop and it's going to loop through between a throttle value of 0.3 and a throttle value of 1.0. Um, I start from 0.3 because if I start lower than that, then there just isn't actually enough current to get the motor rotating. Remember, my motors who are driving um, a, a gear train in there and then they're driving a quite a heavy wheel on that. So it needs quite a bit of force to actually get them to start. So I started this from point three. Then basically I'm going to set that on both uh, motors. So to make it look right, because the motors are on different sides of the um, of DDD, um, we need to drive the right one in the opposite direction to the left. Otherwise, um, you know, it would look like it's going around in circles, which just doesn't look quite right on photography for me. Um, so we're going to do that and then sleep for uh, 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds we're going to speed up. Then at the end of the, once we've reached maximum speed, we're actually going to uh, switch the direction so that uh, we start speeding up again from point three, but this time they're going the other way around. So that's it. That's, let's have a look at that running as a demo. So here we go. You can see both the motors rotating and you can see that every 10 seconds they should start to speed up and uh, go a little bit faster and a little bit faster. Um, I've not given you the audio of the droning motors. Of course, at full speed, these are going way faster than I ever intend having this robot run around my, my house at. So uh, we're going to be running lower speeds on this, I think. So we have a throttle for DDD. To usefully control this, though, we need to know what effect the throttle is having on the motors. 
that is the subject of the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps other people find it. Please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.